In late 2019, the music artist Negative XP went viral as a result of his song Scott Pilgrim vs. the World Ruined a Generation of Women, mocking a stereotype of girls with dyed hair and comparing them to the film's most recognizable character, Ramona Flowers. The song quickly exploded in a way he likely couldn't have expected. Its success across TikTok and subsequent controversy due to some of the lyrics resulted in the growth of not just his career, but the popularity of his niche as a whole. With an online community forming around what detractors labeled incel punk. The other artists within this subgenre began generating attention of their own, developing loyal followings on music sharing sites like SoundCloud. As time passed, it became clear these artists were not simply amidst a fad. Negative XP had given life to a small corner of the internet that was here to stay, and eventually, some of these guys started to think, hey, what if we were to hang out, but not in a Discord call, in real life? Two years later, this ragtag group of anti-social musicians would become significant enough to host their own concert, with hundreds announcing online that they would be traveling to attend the event. Fringe e-celebrities promised to make appearances, drawing in their own audiences. But things didn't go entirely as planned. Political activists rallied their followers, the police were called to the scene, and attendees had their doxes posted on Twitter as retribution for attending. This is the story of Virgin Fest 2021. Yes, I'll always be alone Cause no one wants a cat with a head full of stones Virgin Fest was announced early in the summer, with a specific date picked out in advance for the event, September 11th. It was to be held at a tattoo shop in Atlanta, Georgia. Tickets were going to be sold at the door, priced at $5 each for attendees. Headlining the event was, of course, Negative XP, alongside other associated acts from his collective. The initial lineup advertised performances from Hard Christ, Hot Leather, Eggy or Egg White, and Soda Boy 64. These names may not mean much to someone outside of the community, but to those familiar with the scene, this was an important event. All of these people have small but loyal followings, with their fans feeling that their music touches on subject material many artists would rather ignore. Add the fact that they weren't going to shy away from making jokes about controversial subjects, and it's no surprise why they managed to garner such loyal fan bases. And at Virgin Fest, all of these big names would be meeting in person for the first time to do live performances for their fans. Negative XP, who is known for his contradictory statements on Twitter, claimed to be unaware of what Virgin Fest was, despite being listed as the main act, and even accused them of using his name without permission for advertising. Needless to say, he's a liar and not to be trusted. Unfortunately, not everyone originally listed would be able to attend. Firstly, its location made actually traveling there somewhat of an investment. For anyone not living in the South, or more specifically, the Georgia area, it wouldn't be cheap to travel for a one-day event. This price is something that many neats, who foolishly squandered their riches on obscure altcoins, wouldn't be able to afford. Within the first week, Soda Boy 64 had already dropped out, and another would-be performer stated that they couldn't attend due to some unfortunate mental health issues. 13th Century Cowboy was going to be one of the smaller artists featured, most well known for his song about the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius. People seemed really excited for him to attend and hear him perform live. But just weeks before the event, his real-life identity was compromised, resulting in him deleting his entire internet presence. Consequently, most of his discography is currently lost, with only bits and pieces available here and there. By the time the event was actually set to happen in September, nearly half the lineup which was initially announced had either dropped out of the event or quit the scene entirely. Regardless, the remaining members were still enough of a draw for Virgin Fest to continue, and the week before it took place, updated promotional material was posted, clarifying its current status. Tickets would no longer be sold in person, and had to be purchased online. They even had a merchandise page now, with t-shirts being sold for $20 each, simply reading, I lost my virginity at Virgin Fest. Up until this point, the existence of Virgin Fest had remained pretty underground. Word of the concert stayed within the small community which planned to attend. Posts advertising the event only received a few hundred likes, at most. But that didn't mean that no one else was paying attention. Cowboy's identity wasn't simply leaked online on accident. He was actively doxxed before he wiped everything. With the entire community being involved in off-color jokes about everything under the sun, they were bound to attract the attention of some rather unsavory parties, including those known for posting the private info of those they don't like online. 
What the entirety of Virgin Fest didn't know is that while they were planning the event, another group was carefully monitoring its conceptualization closely. With the event scheduled that very day, they saw it fit to strike. The 11th of September had finally arrived. The morning before Virgin Fest was set to take place, the Atlanta anti-fascist published an over 30 tweet long chain warning the public about the event. They wrote, Heads up, tonight at Toki Tattoo, far-right edgelord hipsters are holding Virgin Fest. The headliner, Negative XP, is a misogynist piece of shit whose best-known song is about a whore, a hole. Many of his followers are racist groipers who will likely attend. It doesn't matter if they're doing this to be edgy. Recent years have shown that ironically supporting white power and far-right organizing is actually just supporting racist organizing. They go on to describe Negative XP's persona, writing that he idolizes mass shooters and pointing out that he follows several explicitly right-wing accounts on his Instagram page. Raven, the event's organizer and employee of the tattoo shop where it was to be held, tried to reach out in private to explain that the concert was not politically motivated. From her messages, she seemed to be acting in good faith, simply trying to explain the situation and mitigate the controversy. Can you please delete your tweet about Virgin Fest? We are not associated with Reapers at all. This is simply a fun show we are throwing, and none of us are far right. This attempt at extending an olive branch was futile, as Antifa opted to publish her request and then make parallels between the event's performers and the actual perpetrator of a mass shooting last year. The women-hating, far-right performer is being hosted in Atlanta less than half a year after a mis misogynist gunman murdered eight people in our community. Obviously, this language was very inflammatory and began to generate bad press for the event. Due to the newfound controversy, Virgin Fest was dropped by the tattoo shop mere hours before attendees were scheduled to arrive to see the performances. The event organizer wrote on her Instagram story, Virgin Fest is not being held at Toki Tattoo. Sorry if I offended or gave the wrong ideas out. I did not know the extent of the situation. I do not support extreme views. Love you. Be safe, everyone. This, once again, did nothing to quell the Twitter anti-fascists, who instead called for Raven to be fired by her employers and published her personal information to Twitter. But there was no way to cancel or postpone the event now. People had made travel plans to attend. Some had spent hundreds to be there. With the performers already present, and people having made arrangements to arrive, the event was miraculously able to find a new home four minutes away at the Chosewood Park. In spite of the opposition and controversy online, people began turning up for the show, and performers prepare their sets. I know that a lot of people from different political backgrounds are going to watch this video, and many will vehemently disagree with the views of some of the performers involved, and the messages within their music. But I think it's worth emphasizing that this wasn't meant to be a political rally. It was a concert for people who liked music, and nothing more than that. Raven had organized the event solely out of appreciation for the music, and as a fun time for people who had been spending so much time together online. Even if you don't believe her, it begs the question of if people are allowed to simply host a concert independent of their views. The way they were framing it was as if we were witnessing the formation of a militia, or some kind of active threat against the local community's safety, when it was really just a bunch of kids in a park singing some songs together. The musicians and attendees alike were there for one reason alone, to have a good time. Despite the venue being changed last minute, forcing the performances to be held outside, meaning there would be no electric guitars or drums or amps, the sets were reworked to be done unplugged. The actual event lasted four hours in total and was broadcasted live on Twitch by a streamer named Trophy, where every major plot point can be seen. Negative XP, who had made tweets claiming he wouldn't be performing and had family matters to attend that prevented him from going, snuck into the crowd dressed in camouflage and a fake beard. His set lasted only 20 minutes long due to him not being able to perform with all of his gear, but attendees still seemed to appreciate seeing him live in any capacity. Watch me clean, and I let you Just so hard, forget you, forgive me If you want to, make me believe it upsets you Everything was going well, despite the major setbacks. But, as you may have guessed given their previous relentlessness, Antifa was not satisfied and continued live-tweeting the concert. They photographed a man with white nationalist tattoos, claiming that he was security. When the organizer responded that this wasn't true, Antifa instead stated that he had adopted the position and was effectively security. Which, to me, sounds like libel, but whatever. They also took photos of random attendees to call them out for wearing t-shirts from bands they disapproved of, such as Burzum. 
Frustrated that they hadn't interfered enough for the event to be entirely canceled, Antifa resorted to calling law enforcement on the event. I guess they expected the police to show up to disperse the crowd and arrest the Asian guy with a bowl cut and a guitar. But because no laws had been broken, and given it wasn't a political rally, upon arriving, the officers simply stuck around and enjoyed their time even taking selfies with many of the concert goers. At one point, the crowd even began chanting, we love cops. The account wrote in response, event organizer Raven talked with the cops who were letting the event continue in the park after dark. Easy to imagine that going differently if it was a Black Lives Matter event. Antifa continued their campaign against Raven, refusing her apologies and demanding she be fired from Toki Tattoo. They eventually even doxed her and included it in the thread. Four days after the event, the business issued a statement formally announcing that she'd been let go. They wrote, Hello, sorry for the delay in response. We needed a few days to collect our thoughts. We no longer employ Raven Rap. We had no part in planning or organizing Virgin Fests. It was an independent event which we should have researched more on before we let it happen, and we take accountability for allowing them a platform. Sorry for all the chaos or trauma we caused anyone. We are a safe space, female POC owned business and do not support these extremist views at all. Love you all and be safe. Meanwhile, in Virgin Fest's official Discord server, Raven wrote, It's over for me, bros. My life is over. People are calling for me to get fired. People in my community are canceling me. In their pursuit against authoritarian women hating men, I guess? I, I, I don't really know. Antifa had managed to achieve a few victories, calling the cops on a peaceful demonstration and getting a woman fired from her job amidst the pandemic all for the crime of helping put together an event for musicians who sing about rejection. Ultimately, the concert still managed to be a success, as memories were made and people who'd familiarized themselves online got to meet each other in person for the first time. Everyone at the event seemed happy to be there, supporting artists they liked. Despite the subject matter of many of the songs being anything but happy, it seemed wholesome looking in. <laughs> To many, between the acoustic performance and crowd singing along, it felt like the end of an era. The future of events such as these remains up in the air given the backlash Virgin Fest received. Interestingly, it was later discovered that Antifa had sent someone to attend the event undercover. Well, I, I say undercover, but it's pretty obvious who here is Antifa. In the aftermath of the entire ordeal, Negative XP wrote a post directed at her, stating, The weird thing, besides you lying for most of this thread, is if you were there, you could have talked to me about what I'm about instead of shitting your pants on Twitter. You're a coward, a liar, and your soul is going to burn in hell for your sins. May God have mercy on you. Prior to the cops arriving at the event, there was no real threat of danger, so it's strange they were called at all. I doubt this undercover Antifa super soldier felt particularly threatened given the fact that she went to the event unhindered. She even got the chance to take creep shots of people to expose them on social media. At the end of the day, Virgin Fest was a bunch of losers from the internet coming together to celebrate the work of artists they enjoy. Controversial as their music may be, it sounds a lot more wholesome than getting people fired for organizing a concert, but hey, maybe that's just me. I've been Turkey Tom, thanks for watching, and until next time, leave me alone. My only friend is my computer, I feel like such a loser.